uh, high tunnel construction, uh, the first uh, point of, that you need to consider is where you're going to lay out your location. Uh, here we've got this laid out in the middle of his field. Um, we started out with uh, setting the corners. The corners are going to be uh, 14 feet apart and then we can make any of these tunnels actually any length that we want in increments of three feet. Um, after we get the tunnel laid out we make sure that we got 14 feet squared on that side and then we've come along and actually put a small mark on the soil as well where we're going to pound the rebar in at a later time here this, uh, at this workshop. So site location is important. You want to be near uh, a water source. Um, if you need some power periodically it's nice to be near that but you can uh, theoretically put a tunnel up nearly any place that you want. Um, there's a, a plan for that on our USU Extension website. You need to go buy the supplies that are listed in that and then what we're going to do is we're going to mark um, the various boards that we have, um, line them up where they are, and then put an identifying uh, mark on that as well. That identifying mark helps you uh, make sure that you have all the pieces, um, and then when we're done with that and we're cutting them, we're going to lay them out in some order so that we can go back through and put the end wall together and construct the door that's going to fit in that end wall. Um, we need to have an end wall on each end of the tunnel, so you need uh, to, to do the uh, sufficient for that. And if you're building more tunnels, of course, you need to have enough material to do all of that work as well. So we're going to cut a few here um, and then lay them out. Uh, for us, it's easiest with a chop saw. It's best to mark them all out ahead of time and then uh, come back um, and cut them all and then lay them out in the appropriate order so that we have uh, what it is. Before we do any power equipment usage, you should have safety glasses on in case of that. And the second thing that you should do is you should make sure that you have earplugs in for protection of your ears. So your eyes and your ears are protected. Um, and then we're going to uh, be cutting. The other thing to remember when you're around power tools, know how to use them. Follow the instructions that are there. Be very careful of your fingers. Uh, once you cut one off, it's pretty hard to put it back on. And now we're going to uh, cut that. Sometimes you might need someone to help support the board. You've got a line that's laid out on it. And we're just going to cut those. There's a little bit of waste that comes with it, but when we constructed the, uh, the design for the uh, tunnels, we minimized the waste as much as we could. And so there's always going to be a little bit that's there. And then just lay out your boards uh, in the appropriate orders and work your way through uh, cutting the boards uh, to the appropriate lengths. And um, in this case, the grower is using pressure treated lumber. Um, uh, most times uh, the soil, uh, the, the boards are going to be in contact with moisture, so having them pressure treated is good. Um, if you're growing organically, um, you're going to have to check with your certifying agency to make sure that um, the wood is, uh, meets uh, the National Organic Program certification standards. Uh, you may, in that case, have to use regular timber, pine of some sort, and generally when we do pine, we'll often paint the pieces so that they're uh, protected from the uh, soil moisture and from the moisture that uh, gets into the wood. In this case, we're not going to paint them today because we're using pressure treated. Yeah, Brittany's over working on getting the arches or the ribs formed for the high tunnel. Um, one of the things that you need with the if you just have a 20 foot length piece of PVC, it's insufficient length to go to adjust to our, uh, fit our tunnel. So what we've done is we've gone and cut a 28 inch piece of additional PVC that's getting glued into the bell end of that. And that gives us uh, a total length to stretch across our 14 foot width and it'll give us a height that's about eight foot in the center of the tunnel. And then you can stand up and do the work that you need to do in it. If you just went with a 20 foot length, um, your, your tunnel's quite a bit narrower. 
So she's just cut all of several uh, enough pieces, 28 inches long. Now she's just making sure that the ends are kind of clean, putting a little glue on them and slipping them together. And then they'll just be laid out here because then one of the other steps that we need to do is put a little paint on the outside of those as well so that uh, off gassing that comes from the PVC doesn't interfere with the plastic. Um, so we will put a, some latex paint on the outside of these tunnels. It's easy for us to do that right on the ground ahead of time. We just lay them all out together and then quick, quickly brush some paint on it and let them sit there in the sun to dry. Yeah, what we're using is Schedule 40 pipe, so it's thick pipe. Um, it's uh, one inch internal diameter, um, and it's one inch and, uh, and three eighths roughly outside diameter. Um, it's got a lot of rigidity to it, but it, over that long length, it will uh, stretch quite nicely and attach to the, the rebar posts that we're gonna put in that'll help anchor it to the soil. So. Uh, the PVC, um, in some of our research work up at the university, um, we've got uh, about four tunnels that have been up so for nearly 10 years and we're still using the same PVC pipe, so it lasts for a very long time. Um, we just mark it and then take a power saw, either your chop saw or a hand saw um, or a hand power saw of some sort and just cut right through that. Makes it quick and simple. Doesn't need to be a clean, real clean cut. Um, you can use the, the pinching type cutters that you would use if you were doing lawn irrigation or something like that, but that just takes a very, very long time. So we do everything with a power saw. So um, we've got our PVC and you can see Brittany in the back still putting those together. Um, here's a rebar uh, anchor post that's gonna be driven down into the soil. We generally use half inch um, uh, rebar, and that fits nicely inside the PVC. Uh, having marked out our area beforehand, we would take a piece of rebar and we're gonna drive it down into the soil uh, so that it's got about six inches sitting above the ground level. You can go a little higher than that if you want but uh, generally about roughly six inches. And then our PVC, when we put our arches up, it will sit on that and span across the area that we're trying to cover. So our marks in the soil tell us exactly where we need to be. Your ribs or your PVC pieces are gonna be about three feet apart. That gives you sufficient rigidity. You need to have a, a good hammer to drive that in. The rebar pieces, generally we get 24 inch ones, but the grower here is in a very sandy type soil and he felt that they may hold better if he went a little bit longer. So instead of 24 inches, he cut his to, to 30 inches. Most of the time, if you go to one of the large box stores that sell uh, hardware and stuff like that, you can buy pre-cut uh, rebar and that's pre-cut to two feet long or 24 inches, and that's what we generally recommend. We're at the point now where we can start constructing our end walls. As you can see in the backdrop, we have all of our pieces cut to the appropriate lengths. They're all labeled um, according to the instructions that are available for constructing one of our low-cost high tunnels. And then in that publication, we've got a layout diagram that shows how we're going to do it. Our bottom piece that's going to sit on the soil is 16 feet long. Um, a few minutes ago, I went in and I drilled a one and a half inch hole, uh, one foot off the end of that uh, uh, board. And that's where that rebar piece is going to come through. That's a corner. And the, the PVC pipe is gonna come in and fit inside that orifice, that orifice as well. I've also marked out the points on the board where the various uh, doors and support posts are going to be screwed to. So by having that all pre-laid out and marking those off, I know exactly where I need to stick these uh, different boards. And then I'm gonna use the diagram. This part is board number A. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start connecting B and C and D and E 
together as I form uh, the end wall for the tunnel. So I'll go start doing that. So I start with section B. Um, I'm going to, I've got the, my lines where I need to do that, and I'm going to drive uh, some three-inch, some three-inch screws into that to help fix that board together. So there, I've got the first one done. So that was B. Now I've got to go over and do uh, D, which is cut to the same length. And I'm going to put that here. Now it's really imperative that you have a good surface to work off of. Working off the bed of a truck like this or a trailer isn't really the best way to do these things. Uh, because you're going to be moving around a little bit and if you had a nice flat concrete surface or something like that it's uh, sometimes much easier for um, the construction to occur now our next piece is going to be boxing in these two sides and so we're going to need an E and F. And E and F essentially uh, fit together like such. So you can start to see what that looks like. And then the matching one on the other side will be uh, G and H. Screw your upright first. Two screws are more than adequate. You don't need much more than that. One of the things that you need to do when you're constructing these is to have a couple of cross members that are set on angles. Now on those, um, you can actually measure the angle in order to do that. And in the diagram, one of the angles for this piece, which is uh, I piece, uh, the one angle uh, is uh, uh, 22 degrees up at the top and the bottom angle is 68 degrees. Well, it's hard to get those measurements. So a simple way for you to do it is we cut the boards slightly longer than is required. You want about a one inch gap where your board is gonna connect next to this hole in the bottom. And then we just lay it out. We take our marker and we run a line underneath here because once again, we're not building fine furniture. And that gives us now the angles that we need. You can see the angle that we need to cut for the top. Once we cut that, it will fit in place quite nicely. The other board, which is J, I and J, that you need, we're going to fit the same thing across here. So we're going to lay that out. You can see that it's plenty long for you to do it. This one here is a 47 degree and a 40 uh, three degree so it's a little bit harder to measure but all we're doing is we're just taking our marker we're connecting it right up to the corners on the outside corners of that and now we've got those angles marked and we can go to our chop saw and chop those angles as we need them now with the chop saw you've got a lot of different angle approaches here but it only goes to 45 so one of the ways that we do it is we just kind of eyeball it. You can get your cutting uh, one out of the way and so now what you see is we've got a really nice you know, sharp angle, we've got a real fine angle and then what we can do is we're going to come over to this and you can see that how nicely that fits together right into that location. It fits 
tight here, you don't have a sharp edge, you don't have a sharp edge at the top, and the net effect of that is you're going to then screw those together in a minute. Just bevel it a little bit so that it lines up with that. It's not a square, it's going to be a little bit on the angle when you're doing that. Now if you look at the top here, you see it's, it's one side's a little longer than the other, and so by doing that, now what happens is when you put it in your opening, it shouldn't, it shouldn't bind up at the top. Now you just want to pull it down to the bottom, um, and with your, with your screw things, what we usually do is don't worry about it, just leave a little bit of a gap like you see there, and put, put your screws in it. So another thing that we've done recently is we get a couple extra pieces of rebar, all right? Now why would we want to do that? Well, what we're going to do is that's a half inch piece of rebar. We're going to drill a hole right through the middle of this door and we can then take that rebar piece and jam it into the ground. So if we only want the door to be open that much, we can actually anchor it wherever we want it. So you don't have to worry about it flopping around in the wind on you on a cool day. So we drill a hole through here, but then we also drill a hole through this one because then we can just stick it inside there so that we never lose it, okay? So basically you're gonna drill a hole, another hole in here and then when you open that door, you can jam, put this rebar through it and push it down into the soil and it keeps the door open at whatever angle you want it to be open at. So that's happening and then when we look at our rebar in a minute, you know, essentially what our rebar will do is it'll sit like that and it'll go right over top of that and it fits right in that hole as well. And then it will get formed across here and come down and go inside the other one, okay? So we'll take those long pieces over there and do that in a few minutes. Now, T-posts, we'll need one that's pounded here, one that's pounded there, one that's pounded here, and one that's pounded there, and they should go to into the soil about to that depth, okay? So the top of the T-post should be no taller than that. Yeah, we usually get six feet ones or so, and depending on what your conditions are like, if you got a really, really sandy soil, we might go a seven foot post just to drive them down in enough. So there's yeah, and then your strapping is going to sit right around like such, you know, so it's going to basically be strapped to this post at two locations. Okay, so put that on there and start hammering it in and drive it so that it's down to about right there, the top of it. Okay. So with your strapping then, we're gonna, we're gonna just push this plumb, and then we're gonna just screw these, put these there. And now when you screw those side ones, we wanna drive them on an angle. We don't wanna drive them straight in, we wanna drive them this way. The reason for that is gonna be obvious in a minute. Because now you do the other side, you only need two screws, that other one's gonna help to put some tension on that. Okay, so you got a nice strap there. Now you're going to put another one down below. You want to make sure these inside ones in the doorway are also screwed in far enough because you remember your door's got to go fitting in here. Now, whatever numbers, we don't need a string on the end wall, but we need. Let that go by so I don't have. But what we're going to do is we're going to, we need strings that are cut, one of them cut about to 21 or 20 to 23 feet long and the other one's cut about that long. Four feet. Four feet roughly. Because what we're going to do with these strings is we're going to tie one end down to this and it's going to be about four feet long and the other one's going to be, uh, 13 of them are going to be come all the way across and attach to the string that's on this side. Now the easiest way to do this is you got three foot sections here, so we need about 24 feet. So we'll just tie this on to here. And now we got three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and we're just gonna start looping this. So that's one, 
this is two, and then what we're going to do is they're going to tie one of the, those, all of these are going to get tied one to each one of those on that side, and then just laid out behind you. So each one of these strings, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take it like about that much, so, and we're going to tie it off like such. Because what we want is a little loop that's here, okay? We want a little loop that's like that. It could be a slightly bigger because when that string comes across the top, we're going to fit it through this little loop and then we're going to half hitch it. These are special clamps that we get and they're from a company called Farm Tech out of uh, somewhere in the Midwest. They are. And we will put one on each one. And you can see how they're designed. They've got a place where this piece would sit up inside here hold that end up please there and then you see how it clamps together like that what what you've got with a strap like that what it does is it allows you to and so what we would do is just put every one of those together and the beauty of these straps are is once you start to tighten them down they hold those two things together and we we would make sure that that was in the center of our center line here, right? S screw them down. And then, you know, right now our ribs want to do this. We don't have any way to control the spacing on our ribs. And so by tying them together, we can do that. Some growers and stuff have done it and they just driven a screw through here. And that is a cheap way to do it. That zip tie sometimes will slip a little as well. So with a zip tie, we'll cut it across it and try and hold them that way. But really what you want is three feet between each one of these ribs and you basically work from one end to the other. Right. Okay, so which way is the wind blowing from today? Southish. Southish, right? So when we're laying out plastic, we actually want to go on that side and we want to bring it up from this side across. We don't want to come this way, why? We're fighting the wind and we're creating a sail. So we gotta be smart about which way we're doing it. You gotta pay attention to a few things like that. And there's nothing worse, we've had it where it's been a windy day and we've been putting it up and having a big crew of people is really helpful. Watch that. The other thing with these plastics is you see that black line, that's the center line. So that's what we wanna put right down the middle of the house when the time comes. Somebody, yeah, right in there. Another person in there, a third of the way in. Okay, and then what we're going to do is you're going to just find yourself an opening to back through and we're just going to pull that right up over top of this. Now who, those of you guys with a string need to get ready to get things thrown over the top. Now I want that black line that you see right in front of you there right in the middle. Yes, you can. You see what happens? So anybody on this side, you need to help us tie, get underneath there and get those strings up so we can get them tied down. And I just want them tied loosely. Here. You're good. Okay, so we got all of our strings pretty much over, that's good. Now this is the tricky part. And I need all of you down on this end because that plastic isn't going to go any place anymore because if you don't come down and see this you won't know how to do it. Okay, so if you look at the way we've got the plastic, we've got a lot of extra plastic here, but you can see that as this plastic starts to heat up I can actually stretch it so that it actually comes down and covers that corner. Okay, so even though I got up to about four feet from that point to that point, and I got about an equal amount on that side, what I'm going to be able to do is basically stretch this plastic now so that I'm going to come down and you can see I can fit on that. And now I'm going to fit it on one end first, and then I'm going to loosen those strings enough so that when I go to the other end, 
The sun's heating it, so that it's going to help soften the plastic now, too, that I can really pull the stretch on it. Now, I've got plenty of extra plastic here, so I actually have too much. So what we do is we just cut it like that and probably take off about so, so much that's in my way. And then this is where the screw gun guy has to be right behind me. I'm basically going to fit this together. I'm going to just use that, try and get a nice fit on it as best I can. Just kind of hold it in there. Want it fairly level as you're working it. And I'm just going to roll it up here as I'm going along. My board should be somewhat centered so that I got about equal amounts on that, both sides. And then I'm just going to go about like that and then somebody can come and screw that in there. I want a screw there, a screw there, and a screw there.